Hey, good morning. I'm Christoph Irwin, Positive Energy Building Science Consulting. We are a building science shop here in Austin, Texas, dedicated to bringing the human factor into our designs for our enclosures and our mechanical systems. Today we're going to talk about dun, da, 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 moisture, moisture in the air, moisture in your assemblies, moisture in your mechanical systems. It all is predicated on an understanding of the dynamics of, of moisture, and mainly in the air, since we build our houses and live in the air. So let's talk about air briefly. Air is a mixture of gases. I think we mostly know this. It's um, mostly nitrogen and oxygen. Those two together is around 99% of the components of the air. Argon then takes up most of the rest of the 1%, and there's CO2, which is gradually increasing. Small percentage, I think it's like 0.0, three, nine percent or something, krypton, xenon. So air is gases sucked to the planet by gravity and we live in it. But it has lots of properties that we might not pay attention to. One of the biggest sources of misunderstanding that I, that I encounter when I'm talking to people has to do with humidity and specifically the term relative humidity. The relative is often ignored in there. People think of it as humidity. So today I have a psychrometer, that's psychrometer with an R, and it's measuring 65 degrees out, and then I can scroll through and find that it's also, wow, it went up, 88% relative humidity. And so I can put that into an app in my phone that does some calculations. And those of you who have ever seen the psychrometric chart will be pleased to know that you don't have to do the psychrometric chart anymore. You can do a psychrometric app. <laughs> So I'm putting, looking for, here it is, 88% relative humidity, put that in, 65 degrees, actually 66 degrees, take a picture of it, we're going to put this on the video. So this is showing me 86 grains per pound, it's also showing me a dew point of 62.4. Those are important numbers, that 86 grains of moisture per pound of dry air and a dew point of 62.4 degrees. Those are absolute moisture measurements. And what happens over the course of a day, and, and it shifts as, as weather patterns shift, but generally speaking, the absolute moisture level over the course of a day will stay roughly constant. It's slight peak in the morning for reasons that we can talk about tomorrow. And then it, the relative humidity will change a lot. So right now we have 86 grains per pound of dry air. The same app tells me how big a pound of dry air is, and it's around 13.8 cubic feet. So every time you were to grab 13.8 cubic feet, it would weigh a pound. Don't trivialize that, right? So your house has possibly thousands of pounds of air in it and tens, or if it's a big house, hundreds of pounds of water vapor in that air. So grains, let's talk about grains now. Uh, 86 grains per pound. Indoor conditions, um, summertime indoor conditions when we're really concerned about our humidity that's going to be more like 55 to 65 grains per pound. So we are above that outdoors. It's extremely wet. It's going to be interesting tomorrow what happens if it's wet and cold. And the dew point, 62.4 degree dew point, that's high, right? Comfortable indoor dew points or well controlled are in the 52, 53 up to 56 range. So we are, outdoor conditions right now are higher than the indoor conditions. And what's happening is, I'm going to go a little tiny bit farther into water. So water, we know of three states of water, right? There's solid, ice, there's liquid, liquid water, and then there's vapor. There's actually a fourth state of water, and that's what the water's doing. Can you see any of this wood here? That's what the water is doing when it gets inside this four by four here. It is no longer any of those three phases of water per se. It is a fourth state of water that you could call, or what you could call a fourth state of water, bound water. It is bound to the surfaces. So water as a molecule has a polarity, it has a static charge. The surfaces here it will cling to it. So if we could zoom inside this wood and look at the lumens in here, on those surfaces we would see liquid water getting bound, or excuse me, water vapor getting bound to the surface and then being released from the surface. Constantly being bound and being released. And then the average humidity of that surface is going to be the equilibrium content of the amount of water that's bound to the surface. Now here's the interesting part. Hope I didn't geek out too much here. What we do is we say that the relative humidity of that surface, which determines durability and mold growth, we say it's the same as the air, the relative humidity of the air. And if it was to achieve equilibrium, that would be true. But 
air temperatures are constantly changing inside your house. You're showering, breathing, moving around, making air currents. So it never reaches equilibrium. So there's this tacit assumption in our industry that says the relative humidity of the air can determine the relative humidity of the surface temperatures, which isn't quite true. And furthermore, the absolute moisture content of the air is going to change a lot, which we'll see tomorrow. So one summarizing again, it's 86% uh, relative humidity, 88% relative humidity, excuse me, 66 degrees out, gives us 86 grains per pound, 62 degree dew point. And uh, we can also post a link to this app. This one costs a few bucks, but there's some free ones out there. Okay, see you tomorrow. Okay, so welcome back. What you can see behind us is a uh, snow day here in Austin. The, uh, I guess the weather report was a little uh, pessimistic, maybe, and it's not as rainy or icy as it was expected to be. The schools are shut down today, um, but we're actually gonna be talking about humidity again. So it's not a cold, wet morning as we anticipated. I guess that was sometime around 3, 4 a.m. Instead, it is a cold, dry morning, and we have our psychrometer again here. This is also a psychrometer, pretty cool, Bluetooth linked to an iPhone, but I'm gonna use this one, it's quicker. So this one is telling us that it is 39 degrees out, 38.6, I put 39 into here, and it is 36% relative humidity. So if we go back like we did yesterday, and we use this psychrometer app, um, which keep in mind keeps you from having to really study the psychrometric chart which is not necessarily a great thing but for those of you who the psychrometric chart is a big enough impediment that it makes you not dig into the whole topic of humidity download a psychrometric app we'll have a link to one on our video here and you just measure temperature and relative humidity there's lots of tools available to do that or you can get it off the weather forecast weather report and that'll give you absolute humidity metrics which are grains and dew point so, relative humidity and temperature together equal grains and dew point. Uh, so, 39 degrees, 36% relative humidity is a grains of 12, 12.8. 12.8 grains per pound of dry air. And the dew point is only 13 degrees. Let me make sure I have this in Fahrenheit. It is in inch pounds, so that's 13 degrees. So what we're seeing there is, I don't remember exactly what the grains were yesterday. They were uh, somewhere around 80, I think, something like that. So the grains have gone from 80 to 11. The dew point has gone from the 60s to 12. And yet the relative humidity hasn't changed all that much. It went from 60 to 36. I, I guess that's pretty big. But more importantly is to realize that grains go from uh, in the single digits easily on a cold, dry winter day to um, a couple hundred grains in a hot attic. Dew point will go from the, this is pretty low, once again maybe the upper single digits to the 80s. Big range of dew point, big range of grains. Relative humidity doesn't usually vary so much. So it, you can get a lot more um, kind of, of a gut feel for how dry it or wet it is outside if you're not paying attention to relative humidity and instead pay attention to grains and dew point. So again, what we were talking about was the pores in the wood, or the pores, the lumens in the wood, uh, and the pores inside sheetrock, it's not just the exterior surface that water is accumulating on through adsorption and absorption. It's the internal surfaces. Vapor will diffuse into this material. If it's drier in the core than it is outside, there's going to be a vapor uh, gradient, vapor pressure gradient. It's going to move moisture into the materials. Okay, so welcome back. We had a little bit of technical difficulty there. Memory card on the camera failed. If this sounds a little different, it's because it's uh, my iPhone over there that I'm talking to now. So we're wrapping up about our little introduction to the difference between relative humidity and absolute humidity, grains per pound, dew point over here, RH, and temperature over here. And we were going to talk about human factor design, how this all ties in, because that's what we're all about. Thinking about how this affects um, not just every human involved with the project, but the owners and occupants. And uh, that, that every human comment was about um, a lot of times owners and developers, you know, they're humans and their factor in the design is different. It's, it's more of an economic factor. We're talking about specifically uh, the comfort of the space, the health aspects of the space, the safety and durability aspects. So how does moisture affect those? How does moisture affect those human factors? 
So when it comes to health, that's probably the most obvious one. I think we all know that mold and all the little critters and bugs that, like dust mites, that are really high on our allergen potency scale, that those all correlate with with moisture. You know, more moisture, more mold, more mold, more moisture, more dust mites, things like that. More critters of all sorts, um, and all of those are bad for indoor air quality. Comfort: We do not pant like dogs. We transpirate water through our skin to stay cool. So. If it's humid inside your house, well then that avenue of cooling is, is not available to you, so you're going to be less comfortable. Um, of course, durability, if this wood here is absorbing moisture, it's going to be more available for uh, little critters and living beings, mold being a living being, to eat it and rot it out. I think that's it. We'll wrap up. Thank you for uh, listening. Talk to you next time.